Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we're going to revisit the Skyline's paintwork. Stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button and the post notification bell to stay up to date with my builds. With that being said, let's get into it. Alrighty guys, so if you don't know, it was about September 2019, I got into an accident in the skyline and in the front left hand corner, somebody merged into me um, while I was right beside him. I did break on the horn. They hit me, damaged my front bar, my left quarter, um, and my light. I went through insurance. Um, obviously, didn't have to pay anything. It wasn't my fault. But when I went to get it repaired, they said they wouldn't touch it because somebody had attempted to repair it before. Yeah, you know, somebody attempted to repair the guards at the top. If you know. G35s, V35s, the the hinges on the bonnet are not the best, and I think somebody put it up too far and they bent both um, guards. So uh, somebody tried to repair that, and because of that, they wouldn't repair mine. So they said they would pay pay me out. So I got some money. I thought, well, I'll just fix it myself. Bought an air compressor, bought the paint bought some hammer and dollies and um, all the material I needed so um, I'll link some of the videos don't know which corner is that one um, the paintwork if you know the pearl white of around the 2005 Nissans were not the best and they would flake so I had flaking on guards on the front, on the um, the bonnet, and on my boot. So I was like, I'll just do a full respray. So put it in here. Had the forester going at the time, and um, I just drove that around. But yeah, put it in here, sanded the most of it down. Not all to bare metal, although I did do the roof to bare metal because. I started sanding it and it started flaking and I had to do the whole roof. So that was good. That was bare metal respray on the roof. And now it's the worst part. So I'm thinking either black roof or set it back and do it white again. But also, I never finished the front bar, the rear bar, and the side skirts. And I never got these trims back on. So what I want to do is actually practice a bit more on applying the paint. Because my clear coat finish was not smooth. So I don't think I'll put it on heavy enough to get a nice smooth surface. So I want to go grab my spare rebar, which is my original rebar. It's got a bit of damage. And I'm going to practice on that. So I'm thinking of also doing the rear diffuser section of it black. Or even I've been thinking of skinning it with forged carbon. I don't know. What do you guys think? Bit of forged carbon back there. Anyway, it's in the garden shed, so I'm gonna go wrestle some spiders that are probably in there. Bring it in here and we'll have a look. Alright, just got the horses 
and the rear bar in. As you can see, it's pretty damn dirty. It was actually sitting under the veranda for quite some time. It's got some bird droppings on there, but um, did have a bit of damage here. So, uh, not too sure how it is at the moment. How it is like on the car, because originally it is that one, so it was a bit of damage there, but when I changed it over to the other one, it wasn't, so I fixed that rear panel up. So hopefully it's all right. Something just fell, scared the crap out of me. It was, yeah. Gotta get them in the car soon. So yeah, I've been toying around with the idea of this bottom section being black. As you can see, I didn't mask it off very well. I just wanted to see roughly how it would look. My son's crying. Back in a sec. <laughs> I just rotated his bed um, before he went to bed, so it was at the wrong end. He didn't know where he was. Anyways, back to the rear bumper. The uh, one I remember. That might be the only problem. Uh, I think there are some spider cracks in the paint somewhere. So we're going to have to get this cleaned up and uh, have a look at it. So uh, get a bucket, get some water, soapy water, wash this off, get rid of this electrical cable here. Alrighty, so. Lesson learned, don't leave bird poo on your paintwork. It's actually eaten into it. But, yeah, the wash really didn't do much. Just the primer wasn't sealed. So it's gonna need another rub back. So, it's all good. So I've been getting some hook and loops for my buff, which are actually um, paper, sandpaper. So, just recently got some thousand grit and some six hundred from Toolpro. Get a bit of their stuff lately, and I want to try out some really really fine stuff. So I just went onto eBay and got some stuff from China, which is like two or three months out. So I think it's like May. It's supposed to be here, but it goes all the way up to seven thousand. So that'd be more for like detailing when it's actually finished. But um, yeah, I've got some 402. Let me find it. There we go, got some 400. This is from Bunnings. I haven't seen this stuff before, but um, it looks, it seems very similar to those pads that I got from Tool Pro. Um, which I think I left over here. I really need to clean up the garage. Really, really, really need to clean it up. Pretty messy. Oh, here. These ones. Same, similar to that. It's really foam backed. This is. Well, it has like a little foam backing. But I guess I could use that with these ones. I've got a little bit more cushion there, so it should be easier to get like, you know, around these curves, these curves here. It's just not flat. So, yeah, 400, 600, and 1000. 600 is generally used um, between coats, so to rough it up for the next one. That's also probably, maybe, a mistake that I did when I was painting. Um, I didn't scuff up, I just tack cloth in between coats, and in here it's obviously not the best painting booth, but um, I think I was more scared of going through the paint, so maybe I wasn't laying enough paint down. 
Um, so it is a base color pearlescent and then a clear that I did. And um, before I got the tack cloths, I just wiped it down with microfiber. I thought, sweet, that's cool. Did the clear. Came up good. Now I looked around the edges where I wiped. And on the very edge was all the dust. It was in the clear. So that was one big mistake. Use a tack cloth. <laughs> Do not use microfiber to wipe down between coats. So, um, it's getting late. It's about quarter to 11, I think. 20 to 11. Um, I don't know if I'll hit this with one of these. Actually, I'll do a 400. Might as well practice on this. Wow, this is weird. So we have this hook and loop backing. So it's hook, loop, right? So it goes in between. But then you got this, which is a uh, loop on the back, and it's like mesh. It's really weird. And look, it's see through. It's weird. Never seen anything like it. Probably gonna rip the crap out of the paintwork. So uh, <laughs> let's give it a go. Why not? 400 is pretty, pretty coarse. Maybe use that when I'm scuffing up for laying carbon fiber sometime in the future. Yeah, I'll uh, get the polisher out and uh, hit it. All right, I've got it on there. It feels so weird. It is pretty coarse. It's gonna take it down, but uh, yeah. It's really weird. That is good having that backing. Well, I've got that forever now. So hopefully it works and stays good. But, um, let's see how this rips it up. I'm just going to have it on one and I'm doing it dry. So I'm going to hit the bird poo. And uh, see how it comes up. See how, how much work I need to put in. Great thing about the Sensei is you can change the speed with the, with the trigger. So it's not always on one. Wow, that works really well. Obviously it's a bit dusty being dry, but um, apparently it lasts 10 times longer than paper. So you can just uh, take these off and just wash them out. As you can see, you can see right through them. It's called Sand Net by Diablo. <sighs> yeah, so that, that went through pretty good. Um, I think this bumper is a little uh, misshaped now from sitting like this for uh, so long. So, yeah, this is really good. Yes, I should have a mask on. Alright guys, like I said before, we had a bit of damage down here in this original bar, but um, it's gone. I don't know if it was, I'm pretty sure I did it. Not the damage, the repair. But I couldn't get the, the curve correct, and it goes from here, so I think it got pushed in here. So this is out a bit more, but this is too flat, not curved enough. So I don't know if I'll end up putting this bar back on. If I can get it tip top perfect, why not? And um, but the other ones look too bad. It does have a few spots where I've 
put body filler in it and you can see it. So, it's bugging me a bit. So it'd be great if I could do this. Um, I've learnt I've learned a bit since I painted it. So, yeah. well, check your primer, spray it and make, make it wet. So that's how it looked if it had paint on it. And check it all out, different angles, different lights. And, um, yeah, you'll get there. Just take your time. So that's what I might do with this. I'm going to take my time. So it won't be this episode. This is done, obviously. You can probably tell that because it's out on Saturday, two days after I did the other one. There's no way I'm fixing a bar, painting it, and getting on the car in two days. Not a panel shop. Plus, I work. So. That pad's really cool, if you call it a pad. I'll have to have a look at my bar I've got on there. Just from here, it, it flattens out a bit. I'm just going to have to have a look, see if it does flatten out, or if it's because it's been sitting, it's flattened out from the heat of summer. I think it needs a bit more filler around here. There's a bit of a bump there too. Once I set it down, I'll give it another wash, make it all smooth, and I can see where I need to work. Obviously that's going to have to be in the sun, so not this episode. I'll have to get into it over the weekend. Alrighty guys, I'm back, and it sounds like it's about to rain. So, I really want to continue this, probably on the weekend, when I can actually do it outside. So I can actually see where I need to do it. Because the lighting in here is not very good. Also, there's uh, maybe some carbon fiber and some forged carbon coming. I don't know. Um, yeah. So uh, if you're pretty keen on some composite stuff, Stay tuned guys, it's going to be some good stuff coming up, but yeah, we'll come back to this, and uh, yeah, comment down below what you think I should do about what I said earlier in the video, because I've kind of forgotten, it was about painting the roof, or just leaving it, um, I'll have to show you actually. The bits I'm talking about, but yeah, pretty keen. This uh, sand net actually works pretty good, so yeah, you can see where I've repaired before. <sighs> hmm, all right, don't mind the dirtiness, but. Got a crack now. This is all spider cracked. Same here. Got a crack here. This is where I hit a big puddle pothole. So we've got a bit of crackage up here too. But the, where the roof is stuffed up, really can't see it, but it's like little pinholes of um, primer. Can't find it. It's too dirty. <clears throat> so 
Pero va. Yeah. So yeah, let me know what you think I should do about the roof. I should just leave it or send it down and redo it white or do it black or even skin it with carbon fiber or um, forged carbon. That'd be something different. <clears throat> so I do have some forged carbon coming. It's on its way. But, um, yeah, we'll get back to this shortly. Um, I'll probably end up putting this bar on the car so I can see it out in the sun, get the right angles. Or just put that outside and do it outside. But yeah, if you like this episode, please comment down below what you think I should do. Also, what would you like to see in carbon or forge carbon on either the Forester or the V35, G35 platform? With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next episode. Bye.